Hi everyone. Can everyone hear me? I'm actually um I'm at the Living Miracles Monastery and Susanna's over in Camus because I'm here helping out with the mystery school. I was the, the virtual reality specialist. And uh I'm here now and they're having a actually they're having a dance party outside, but uh yeah, I'm here now doing the show and yeah, actually mm -hmm. this week's a little bit of a switch up because Susanna, as some of you may know her, is actually going to be on the show instead of Nicholas. So say hi to Susanna. Hi. Yeah, Susanna, maybe uh, yeah. you can introduce yourself a little bit. But I, I first met Susanna uh, right before I came into the community, actually. Um, I was speaking with Jason and... Mm -hmm. I was talking about coming in and and then he's like okay let's have a Skype call and I think I think he uh as soon as the Skype call started I think Susanna picked up instead and <laughs> it was really symbolic actually but we just had a nice talk and I was like who is this again and then <laughs> we just <laughs> talked more about how she just came into the community at the time a few months earlier and she had brought exactly. her little guinea pig and all these <laughs> different things and so yeah, that was really, that was really mm -hmm. sweet. And uh, ever since then, yeah, I just felt a very deep connection with Susanna, and we've we've been going through recently even like this whole like letting go of this friend concept, like this whole friendship idea. Because as you guys know, like in the course, it says a friendship is actually a law of the ego. It's it's actually not really helpful. Like in the world, it might seem like oh, friends, that's that's beautiful. I love my friends and this and that, but it's not really the the deep connection that we want. Really, we want to get to how everyone is our brother and everyone literally is ourself. But friend is actually um, kind of it's like a cover over of actually self hatred. And Susanna, I know you mentioned something about that yesterday that I really felt like wow, that really hit me. So yeah, me and Susanna just feels like we're letting go of that and going into a deeper like a deeper connection so i don't know if you felt to share anything around that but or even maybe introduce yourself a little more yeah i, I don't really know how to introduce myself <laughs> but um yeah i feel like andy and i like we've always had this this connection like you shared and recently I feel like there has been a prayer to have a deeper connection and we started a collaboration for the first time actually since we've both been in community we've always been you know we've been in the same centers we've been at different centers but we've never actually had a collaboration so it was always very yeah just very sweet and loving and but very light like we didn't have a lot to do with each other and I feel like right now we're getting into something where we're going to be collaborating every day and there's like a deep prayer to to really feel really connected and not and not really go by these friendship rules anymore <laughs> like trying to stay on the good side of each other like no just be honest what do you feel like being really authentic and by that letting the love come through in in, in a deeper way and yeah, that yeah. just feels really inspiring because I, I, I feel like that was my prayer. <laughs> yeah, I feel like we just want to grow out of any kind of boxes, boxes. Or concepts or, or plans or, or laws of the ego or anything. You know, we just want to keep expanding and expanding because even it's like this thought, there might be this thought, it's like, oh, well, what happened to Nicholas? And actually he's right in front of Susanna probably. But it's even like we don't have to, always follow the same like regimen or something it's like yeah just because me and nicholas were on the show every single week together doesn't mean that it always has to be that way it's like it's nice to mix things up be a little bit open and expansive and yeah who knows maybe next week it's nicholas and someone else maybe nicholas never comes back maybe i never come back you never know it's like let's just be so flexible be like bruce lee uh I remember he was like, be like water. It's like, be like water. Go 
it's like water fits in any kind of jug, you know, it'll spill out, it'll, it'll mold and mix with anything that you pour it on. And that's really like the spirit. I feel like water is a really nice symbol of the spirit as well. I just had noticed myself with Susanna, the whole friend thing. And then um, recently we came into like a new project okay. in the community where we're both in these new roles called uh, overseers. And it's basically a higher level of communication, a higher level communication role that um, I haven't really been in before. So it's, it's very expansive. and and since that's happening it's more like okay the only way you're going to fit into that function the only way that function is going to work together it's like it's like the seven of us we're called overseers and we're all in high communication with each other but it's only going to work if the relationships between all of us go deeper as well so anything that's blocking a deeper level of connection has to be dropped so i could i could feel that like that friendship thing was still there and it wasn't serving anymore so it's like now it feels like it's collapsing a little bit so so that this function can be more dived into so the love can even come out more in a deeper way yeah yeah i feel that <laughs> i feel like that's the kind the thought that comes up is like there there's like this fear uh, that I've always felt about being really honest with my friends, like being really authentic and being me. Like there was always this feeling like, oh, if I say what I think, or if I get annoyed with them and I say that, they're going to walk away, like I'm going to lose them. And at the same time, I was afraid of picking out people to be my friends that would say those things to me. So I picked them out very specifically, like that they wouldn't... Um, be direct or really say what they really feel and I feel like that's what we're getting into that that yeah because then there's a fear of rejection on my end and I, I had this funny experience this morning with with a dog and um, <laughs> it's gonna sound weird but I have friendship laws with friends uh, with animals like um, there's this this part of me like there's a concept that I, I really love animals and I think they should love me back or they should like me and if if they don't I actually feel rejected so there was just this funny yeah moment where a dog ended up barking at me and I, I just felt like this hit like I felt rejected or something like that but it's like that's really what we want to face and and just see that it, it's actually no, nothing personal like when these things come up and we're we're sharing how we feel like that's really what it's for to see that those laws like like God goes beyond those laws, like the guidance goes beyond those lo those laws of friendship. Like it, it doesn't actually mean anything. So I feel like with with us right now, it's almost like, well, do we want the guidance or the friendship? It's like, do we want God or the friendship? Like there's a choice there. Like, do we want to ma maintain something and like each other all the time and make sure we're like, yeah, I don't know, maintaining something instead of just letting go, being honest, and, and finding a deeper love and a deeper connection. That feels very inspiring to me. <laughs> yeah. And I feel like that's where the no private thoughts and no people pleasing that we practice in the community so often, that really comes into play. Because it's like, you know, it's like, okay, well, I'm not going to say this to them because, you know, they're my friend. I don't want to break that, you know, but it's like the ego is trying to keep certain things hidden still so it's like uh i think a couple of weeks ago you came over to me and you expressed some things to me and i was like whoa okay we've never expressed really to each other before because yeah because um usually it's been with other people and there was i think with me there's this thought that it's like there used to be this thought where with certain ones i'm like oh yeah i don't have anything with them like I feel really close with them. Like, yeah, there's a deep connection. I don't have anything with them. But it's like, whenever I think that, it's it's like, that's always proven to be like not true. Like later something else will seem to come up and it's like, oh, wow. Okay, actually I do. Like, I know with Jeffrey, especially I thought for a while, I was like, yeah, I don't have anything with him at all. Like, I feel like we're literally exactly the same. And 
in many ways and he's just like my brother and <laughs> and then yeah at a certain point it just came up that I was like actually I'm jealous of you that you got to be a millionaire and I and I didn't and I hate you and this and that and but that's the only way we can really let the love come in even more to really be like exposing those private thoughts not people pleasing you know we don't want to maintain shallow level friendships like i know we all want to feel a deeper love and a deeper connection so when when the two two parties so to speak have that purpose in mind for a deeper connection then you kind of have an agreement it's like okay it's safe they'll hold the space for me i can express these things to them and they'll hold the space and and then we'll lift up the layers in the mind together and just feel a deeper and deeper connection yeah so it's worth it to expose the thoughts and know people yeah and i i also had this feeling like it's it's taking off all the limits like friendship is actually very limited like and but then when we're truly transparent with each other and really just having this one purpose like like friendship's nothing anymore like it, it it doesn't even compare to what connection comes through when you're transparent with each other and in this purpose of forgiveness like I don't it's like it doesn't matter anymore like it, it just actually brings us closer and I mean I had this experience with Anna um, in Mexico like a, a few months ago where I felt like I had to face this friendship thing and um, like we, yeah, she wanted to join with me on something and I could feel there was part of me that was like, yeah, sure, let's do that. And other part of me felt like I was compromising, like it didn't feel good. Like I felt like it wasn't, the spirit wasn't behind it. And the hardest thing I had to do was actually say that. Like, I actually don't think we can talk about, I actually don't feel like, this doesn't feel good to me, basically. Like I feel like I'm compromising if I'm going to join with you right now. And it was like this big thing and I was like shaking afterwards and breaking down like there was this huge undoing of friendship and and Anna was crying like we were both (laughs) going through a lot but then after that we just both of us had this feeling of wow that was such a blessing like we feel closer than ever and some of the ego got washed away it's like what else do you want (laughs) it's like less less things to yeah yeah it just felt really amazing and I feel like that, that is what we talked about the, like yesterday, like this feeling of compromise. Like there is something about when you try and maintain a relationship where you try to maintain it, meaning you will compromise for it, to, to mm-hmm. stay friends or to, to stay, I don't know, like to have someone like you. And like that, that is just going to, like that, in my mind it built up a lot and I could feel like every time I compromise, I just, there was just this, yeah, this grievance that just built and built and built and built. And I could feel like it was like a self-hatred as well. Like, oh my God, I I compromised again. Like I I let myself down again. Like I'm not following my heart. And it's like that is in between um, people then. It's like it's in between the friendship. So the friendship is just like fake. (laughs) Like it doesn't even exist really. Yeah, it definitely feels Mm -hmm. like it maintains that self-hatred. Like with me and Nicholas, there's been a lot of, um, it's like you would think since we've been friends since high school and we were very close, you think, you know, I was like, oh, um, they're pretty clear with each other and this and that. But actually over the years, I've had a lot of hatred projected at him. and, And yesterday I had an even deeper insight on what, what was going on with that because for a while I didn't know like why why is there like this hatred with Nicholas it's like I'm I'm supposed to like not hate him because we're best friends and and since high school and this and that and it's not that I even truly hate him of course but we have to be honest with whatever's coming up so that we can release it and really get to an experience that's underneath of the love but yesterday I was just um yeah, I was just looking into our show 
today and even yesterday i i didn't even know how the show would look i didn't know who was going to be on it it just felt like me and nicholas had joined and it just felt like nicholas might not be on the show this week and and so i was really looking at that and i could feel like there was still like like this little bit of hatred towards nicholas so i was really looking at that and then i i heard something that jeffrey had told me and it really like hit me yesterday during this prayer and and it was that this thought that it's like maybe maybe the reason why this hatred is being projected onto him is because he, he reminds you of like a, your past self and you hate yourself like you basically hate the way you used to be and i was like whoa it just hit me all of a sudden and then and then all this self-hatred came up and i was like whoa it was all it was all along the self-hatred and just flashing images of how i used to be in the past and this and that and i was like and then these thoughts like i hated myself like and then i just had to like just i just had to really sit there with the holy spirit and let it all flush up and come through and and yeah it was really powerful it just like and then even like deeper under that it's like i felt like i hated myself for what i did to god i hated myself for making up the ego it's like it's really deep just like self-hatred and yeah it was just yeah i was just letting it all flush through yesterday and and wow like after some of that i just felt so good after that i was so happy and i just thought that was amazing because i you know it's like intellectually we can read the course and be like yeah projection something that you put outside yourself because you don't want to see it within but it's like we have to get we have to really allow it all to come up and get to that point to really see that what it is in ourself even that we're projecting outwards so it was really beautiful yesterday when i when i saw that yeah wow it has nothing to do with nicholas it's just i'm hating what he reminds me of like this self-hatred and then even i had expressed another day that you know it's like it's like the ego the ego makes all these contracts that are like unconscious and subconscious with different ones it's like with our friends there's some kind of contract in the mind that they're going to act a certain way or behave a certain way in order to maintain the friendship. And it's almost in like both minds, so to speak. And then when that contract is broken, the ego is like all pissed off and it's like, how dare you? And this and that. And, and I noticed that for myself because, um, you know, I had this friend, friend group back in Maryland and, and then when Nicholas uh, was really getting into the course and really putting his heart into it, he started to like act differently <laughs> around the friends and because he was happier, you know, we weren't trying to just play this game anymore. So he was happier and he was acting differently. And, and then my friends would reflect my mind and be like, he's just lost his mind. Like he's gone crazier. Like what's wrong with him? What's wrong with Nicholas? And then, and then like all these, all these kind of reflections. And then, and, um, yeah, so I just realized that, wow, it's like somewhere in my mind, the ego is like outraged because it's like, Nicholas, we had this contract together. Uh, why don't you look at it again? Don't you see that we're supposed to maintain a, a friend concept? You know, we had the, the, all these agreements and now you're acting differently. You're breaking all, our, all of our agreements. And I remember he shaved his head one day. I was like, and I didn't know why, but I was like, I hate that why did you shave your head? And then, and then, and then he'll grow like really long. And I'm like, Oh, and like, I never knew why all these reactions would come up with him doing those simple little things that probably didn't affect anyone else. But for me, I didn't know why I felt like some kind of charge with him doing those things until I brought it back to, Oh, wow. I can see. I always had this like little contract in my mind of, with a friendship contract it's like you're supposed to be a certain way and now you're breaking that so it's like the concept's shaking shaky now so yeah it's really questioning all these concepts and then really using the no private thoughts no people pleasing 
to break all those concepts because yeah we don't want any limits that's all that a concept is it's like a limit it's like a little box in the mind and it just keeps us small and little so yeah so yeah I, Suzanne I wanted to ask you uh, I thought maybe you could share about some of your time at the monastery here and um yeah, I just felt like I wanted to talk about communication because I feel like it's related. You know, the true communication really opens the minds up, mind up and shatters these concepts like friendship, et cetera, et cetera, and really washes away, washes away the ego. And right now the community is going through a pretty big shift in around communication like before. So basically the community... Um, we use a lot of different symbols. So we're using the symbol of elders at the moment. It's like, you know, um, Jenny, Lisa, Francis, the ones that have been with David for a while now, we, we sort of call them the elders. And and um, for for a while, it has been that they'll, since they're, they're so tuned in, since they've been mind training for so long, they'll get these downloads and then, like the Holy Spirit will be like, okay, Strawberry Field Festival next August or whatever. And, um, and, and then they'll pass it on. And then the whole community comes in support of that. And now it's a little bit turning upside down now where it's more like um, the residents and everyone else is sort of like coming together to pray on different things that they're feeling. And then they'll come together and pray on something on a decision and be like, okay, yeah, we feel this. And then we come to like the elders and we, we present like this gift and say, we're feeling this. How does this feel? And then they'll say, yes. And then, and then we all get into it, but yeah. And it's, it's a little bit more than that. It's a, like we have ninjas and overseers. So I don't know how much we want to get into all that. And, uh, but yeah, I just thought, I felt like to ask you if you had anything to share around communication and around um, your experience here at the monastery when you came, I mean, sort of came here to whole, flip that whole communication structure upside down, and really have everyone step in communication more. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, there is a few things that are, changing right now in the community and like you said it was it, like it was everything was really on the elders um, for I don't know 10 15 years however long they've been here and most of them are just moving into mysticism like their mind is not even going to go into logistics anymore like they're moving in more and more abstract um, and I feel like um, like the way that it's been set up it's been that I mean the way that we live in our community is through guidance. So usually the one with the clearest minds will be able to tell what the guidance is. And we all join together and it's like practicing to hear the Spirit's voice together. But I feel like um, with the elders stepping out, it's like there, there was a dependency on it where people would just listen and follow. And for a long time that's been amazingly helpful because that has been the training listen to the spirit and follow whether your sp the spirit comes through a brother or it comes to you it's it, it doesn't matter at all but it's almost like there has been that right now there's almost a dependency on the elders but they're moving into mysticism so what's going to happen then it's like there's this this gap that we've been talking about and um, basically everyone's just being asked to step up and um, step up into more strength, step up into communication, stepping into prayer, actually, like praying together. That's what the, the messengers have always, that was their mission together. They would come together and they would pray. And that's what we're being called into now as well. So it just, it feels really exciting, actually. Like it's, it's just this opportunity to come together, pray and hear the Spirit. And we, we still pass it on. Like it's not even that because there's now these overseers, like Andy said, like that's what him and I are part of. And it's not even that we take the decisions, but we have the opportunity to pray together and hear the Spirit and practice and form these deep, deep relationships. Like otherwise, it, we would just go to whoever would know the answer. 
But now it's like, no, let's come together and really pray. And it, it automatically, you, you form relationships with each other. That's the whole point of it all. So that just feels like, it feels very inspiring. And what we did in the monastery during the mystery school is that um, instead of basically the elders praying on everything, passing it on um, to the residents there and, and the participants, it's actually, we reversed the entire thing, is that the participants were praying the, and bringing it to the residents. On, on areas, like they had function areas. So they were in the kitchen, they would pray on, okay, well, how do we feel to do this? What do we feel the Spirit is, is guiding us to do? Then they would bring it to the residents who would then actually come together too and pray. And then that would be brought to the elders. So we, we kind of started using this word proposal. Like we, we pray and we propose, and <laughs> we propose again. And so it's like bringing this gift so that in the end, like, no one really has to figure anything out and they can just listen, what, what do I feel, and share that. So it's like there's still no moving away from guidance. Like that is still going to be the way all the time. But it's actually, it's almost like um, I feel for myself. It's like I'm, I'm learning to trust myself and learning to trust that I'm hearing the Spirit and I feel like I'm... I don't know, like the way that everyone's supporting that is like just confirming that when, when they hear that too. It's like a confirmation and it's building this confidence and this strengthening the relationship with the Spirit, which is everything that we need <laughs> and everything that we're going for. So it just feels like this amazing opportunity to, to really, really link with the Spirit more and more and more so that the elders can step back and they can go fully into mysticism and we can still support what is valuable to us because I feel like this is something you have to want. And for me, this is something I want. I feel like this ministry is valuable. I don't want it to stop. I want to continue. And this is how we do that, like together, come together, like, like it started, like the way that it started. Yeah, because it's such a precious opportunity for all of us to listen and follow. You know, and it's even like at the Mr. School, there might be this thought, it's like, oh, uh, what do you mean the participants are uh, coming together and praying to bring decisions for the kitchen and different areas? It's like, they're here on a retreat. But it's like, no, but the most practical, uh, what we want to learn is the most practical application of the course. So it's like, the most practical application is listening and following. And, um, and yeah, I just had this experience here during the mystery school, the last few days, we had like a three-day workshop for virtual reality. And it was so beautiful because, um, you know, they told me, I'm used to, the, I'm, I'm still shifting from the old way things used to be in the community to the new way. The old way would be like, okay, Andy, you're going to do a virtual reality workshop and then someone will tell me everything that I need to do and this and that. And, and, and we're completely shifting away from that. So this year it's more like, Andy, this is your workshop. It's your it's virtual really reality workshop. Take it and go. Like put your whole heart into it. Put all your mind energy into it. And then uh, I know we have one minute left, but I just wanted to say that it was amazing because we had this workshop. So every single person that would come in, I would pray with them. And then they would tell me how they're feeling. And I would just pray and ask the Holy Spirit, what's the simulation that they're going to do? And then I would get it very clearly coming in. And even sometimes it would be like, okay, this one first and then this one. And then we'll do the plank or we'll do the whale eye gazing. And I don't know, it was just a beautiful lesson in listening and following. So I feel like we're all really coming into more listening and following and trusting ourselves and trusting what we're hearing. And, and yeah, it's really a precious gift. And I feel like I have so much mind energy that I just want to really go into it. Like, like, yeah, let's run retreats. Let's run some outings. Yeah, so it's really exciting. And I think we're just out of time. So I just want to thank all you guys for being on the show. And thank you, Susanna. It was really thank beautiful you. having you on the show. And I love, <laughs> I love you, Andy. So, yeah. Okay. Thank you, guys. <laughs>